everyone. I haven't done one of these solo vids in a while, especially here. But obviously, as you can see by the title, there's been a lot of talk um, regarding what happened in Wisconsin with Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm just sick and tired of people making excuses. As someone who has been following these protests across the country, I went to Seattle, I've been to Portland, I've been to states like Florida where they're having protests, I've been all over California. And the protests aren't a monolith. It's not just Black Lives Matter. It's not just people who consider themselves Antifa. It is different kinds of people coming together and protesting against police brutality and for black lives. So when people want to say that this is all Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter is co-opted, um, some parts of the organization are. But you can't say this movement is co-opted. This movement is a bunch of people who don't know each other going to these protests. It's a bunch of young kids. And um, what happened in Wisconsin is unacceptable. And I've been seeing way too many people try to make this okay and come up with excuses and the more I see that the more I feel like this country is headed towards a civil war if we don't stop it now there are a lot of people that want civil war the left the real left not the Democrats should not want a civil war that doesn't help anybody because if we fight a civil war a race war we're not going to go after the real culprits we're not going to go and have a class war that it's this is what they want they want us to be fighting each other they want us to tear each other apart so all of that is true but then there are people that think they're progressive and they go around and say you know what people should stop protesting because it's not getting anywhere and they're being violent and all of this and there's riots well here's the thing you can't stop protesting racism when this country is not a post-racial society. I think a lot of people thought this country was going to be a post-racial society, but it isn't. This country is still a very racist country. And if you don't notice it, it's because you have been allowed not to notice it. A lot of people who follow me are independents and, um, you know, a lot of people on the left, but also independents and libertarians. And what I've noticed is when I bring up the issue of race to some of these people who consider themselves, hey, I'm pro-free speech, I'm anti-war, I'm all of these things. I bring up race and they cannot talk about it. They get white fragility, I'm going to say it, they get really uncomfortable and they start um, with what about -isms. Well, what about the fact that all these people that Kyle Rittenhouse killed was white? Or what about the knife that Jacob Blake had? Or what about the fact that Kyle uh, was in his sec had his Second Amendment right and he was being attacked? And what about this? And what? There's so many excuses people make to okay what happened, and it just doesn't work that way because the same excuses are not made when it's the other way around. If Kyle Rittenhouse had been a black man, he would be dead right now. Let's not kid ourselves. Because we have seen side-by-side -side comparisons as to how the police treat black people and white people. So, Fiorella, but all people suffer under police. All people suffer under capitalism. Of course we do. We are all black, white, yellow, everything suffering under this oligarchy, under this terrible, terrible failing economy. All of us are suffering. Every life matters. The problem is that black and brown people, apart from the economic issues they face, have to deal with racism. And you cannot dismiss that and say, well, I'm just going to pretend that racism isn't an issue because we're all one race. We're one human race, right, Fiorella? Yeah, we fucking are all one race. But too many people don't see it like that. Too many people see others as less than. And that's the problem. You can't just gloss over that and say, well, you know, we just need to go after the elites and, and that's it. Like, and not worry about what's going on with the police and not go after cops. Because the problem is people don't see that. You cannot skip these steps. You have to do both. You have to tackle both race 
issues in America and economic issues. When you don't do both, there's a problem because if you just tackle symbolic issues regarding race, if you're just like, well, Kamala Harris is going to be a great VP, possibly president, because she's a woman of color, when she literally jailed more black and brown people than anybody as a prosecutor, when she refused to absolve people who were on death row, who were completely innocent, you're missing the point of her record and you're just using her as a, as a brand for black and, and Indian people. Okay, that's symbolic. That is emptiness. That's not what we really want to enact change. That's what the Democratic Party has hijacked. However, just because the Democratic Party has hijacked these things, it doesn't absolve the fact that we have racial issues in America. So by the same token, you can't just be like, well, we just if we fix class, everything will fall into place. No, it won't. There are people who are very wealthy who are literally attacked. Uh, or who are like, if they go in their house, uh, they get the police called on them. They're like, you don't belong here. We've seen that. So it doesn't matter. You could be a wealthy white man or a wealthy black man, and you will still see that racism be committed against people of color. So I just get really irritated when I see people who think, yeah, let's stop this U.S. imperialism. Let's stop this uh, economic issue for all working people. Let's do all that. But when it comes to race, they just want to ignore it because it doesn't affect them. And that's something you have to be humble about. You have to understand that if you are not a person that is of black descent, specifically black, brown people too, but specifically black, Asians, I I have seen people be so racist against Asian people during the coronavirus. It's disgusting. And I live in California where there's a lot of Asian people and people want to ignore that and say, well, we need to come together. You're never going to get people to fight side by side with you against the oligarchy if you don't listen to them. If you don't say, you know what, I'm going to listen to what you're feeling, to what you, you're, you, you went through because I won't understand because I am this person and I've never had an issue with police, blah, blah, blah. You have to understand where these people are coming from. And the problem I see with a lot of people that I thought were you know, we're good people on our side is that they are trying to gloss over this issue and trying to put, but Kyle Rittenhouse acted in self-defense. Are you kidding me? Self-defense is if a man goes and tries to rape a woman and they, they hurt the man or they kill him. That's self-defense. Like if, if you are specifically going after me to kill me, to do something, and I, and I don't want that, that is self-defense. This young man, 17 years old, had his parents who were very, very uh, pro-cop, you could say white supremacist, had his mom drive him from out of town into Wisconsin to protect property. If you value the protection of property, first of all, over human life, I have a problem with that. Um, But aside from that, she drove a 17-year-old out of town, gave him a gun. The kid had been in trouble before. And that's already breaking the law. For all those people who love the law, they're like, oh, I'm the law. We got to uphold the laws, law and order. Well, this kid broke the law. He broke the law by having a gun at 17 years old. His mother broke the law by allowing him to do that. She She is complicit in what he has done, 100% and then decided that he was going to be a vigilante and protect property. Now, well, that's not racist. He was just trying to help the small businesses that were there. He had pro-cop propaganda all over his Facebook. Like, let's just be real here. He had pro-cop propaganda all over his Facebook. He went armed. He could have gone armed with non-lethal weapons. No, he went armed with lethal weapons to protect property from protesters who are marching because Jacob Blake a few days ago was shot seven times by police for breaking up a fight between two women. Oh, but he had a knife. Oh, but he had this. Oh, but that that doesn't matter. You need to get through your head that you could be an ex-convict. You could have a suspended license. You could literally be a drunk. You could be anything. You could be a sexual predator. You could be whatever. If you're free and you're in your car 
and the police pulls you over, that doesn't mean you should die. It doesn't mean you should die. The police aren't there to literally murder people just out of, out of whim. That's their first go-to, it seems like. And that's why people are marching. So you have to understand that when a kid goes and has all this pro-cop propaganda and acts like a vigilante, he's not going there to be on the side of per- protecting people. He's, he's, he's chosen the side he's on. And it's unfortunate we have sides. It's unfortunate because we, that we've come to this point because we haven't dealt with this for so long. And like he chose to literally go after these protesters. Now, I've been to protests all over the country. When you are a protester, you have to have a team when you're doing these protests that watches over for people like Kyle Rittenhouse. You are literally, literally going to have to be careful because after what happened with Heather Heyer, people are more aware of, of possibly being attacked, etc. And so when I was in Seattle, we stopped somebody, Johnny and I, from with a van. We were questioning the guy and the guy did not want to talk to us. He was in a van. He was holding his pocket like you know, this, is, this white man in this Black Lives Matter protest trying to enter his car in a blocked up area. So there are protesters there that are always watching and monitoring for suspect, uh, suspecting people because believe it or not, you guys, you guys might not want to believe it. There are a lot of white supremacist groups out there. There are a lot of people that have been emboldened by what Donald Trump has done. Okay. I, I am not even in favor of voting for Biden. I do not think Biden is going to solve our problems. I don't think he's any better than Donald Trump, but what Donald Trump has done is embolden people to feel like they can do this and get away with it. This hatred for any sort of protester, this idea that all these protesters are Antifa, that they're all socialists, that they're all Marxists, that they're going to burn this country down. That's the idea that people like Trump has like pushed. And so when Kyle Rittenhouse went and, and did that, of course, there were people that were watching him and he was interviewed because we went over this full seven minute video, the full seven minute video. We have it on um, the combo couch and at, they had interviews of Kyle before he went and shot people. And he literally said, oh no, we have live rounds and I'm ready to protect the property. So people were alerted, hey, there's a possible white supremacist, proud boy, bugaloo, whatever the hell you want to call him, um, that is dangerous and he has live rounds because guess what? Even the police don't have live rounds at protests for the most part, for the most part. Um, and so they were, they were going, they were like, okay, we got to stop this guy. And, and you know why they couldn't rely on the police? Because the police is out there giving him water and he's over there working with the police, telling them good job. And they're telling them, thank you for being here, Kyle. They literally said that in a video. They said, we appreciate you being here. So this kid who wants to be a cop, like that's his dream is literally working with police. And you're going to tell me that this wasn't at all planned, that this wasn't at all um, directed violence towards a group of people that you don't politically agree with. I mean, this is what that was. And still people are like the violent Antifa, the violent protesters, the looters. Thank you mainstream media for perpetuating that bullshit propaganda because I've been to so many protests and literally none of them are violent. Throwing a water bottle at a cop is the worst I've seen. And if a cop can't handle getting a water bottle thrown at them, they shouldn't be in that position, first of all. And so he then went on and started shooting at people. And then people tried to stop him. Yeah, people tried to stop him after they saw he was shooting people. I would try to stop him if I saw he was shooting people. Why wouldn't you try to stop him? Of course, you have to do whatever it takes to stop the guy. That does not mean that that was self-defense. Any sort of idea that this was self-defense, that the guy he, he shot and killed was a sexual predator, which is false, by the way, is like these things that are coming out that people are repeating the same exact slogans are all false and they're all getting it from the mainstream media. Both CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all of these, they lie and they fuel everything to get people to 
focus on Trump versus Biden and all that when they're both shit and neither of them give a damn about you. And we all know this and we need to be talking about that too. We need to be educating people that electing somebody like Joe Biden isn't gonna make this any better. Sure, if vote for whoever you want, but it's not gonna change your life. What's gonna change your life is what's happening right now in the streets. Because if you don't pay attention to that and where this is coming from, nothing, not, like it's going to go insane. People are going to start killing each other. And there have been protests all over the country and the same scenario, people are scared somebody's gonna whip out a gun and shoot them. And that's not how you should feel in America. That's not how it should be. And there's zero excuse because this kid literally didn't go to protest. He had no right to be there. He's not a cop. He's not employed. He's a vigilante that decided to go after protesters. Any sort of excuse is coming from this narrative for, you can call it the right, but it's not always the right. But majorly right now, what I'm seeing is people that really think that that this kid is a martyr. They're trying to make a martyr out of him. And it's really dangerous when you have people that are deifying this kid. Like, oh, I want, we want more Kyles. We want more people like him. And Coulter, for crying out loud, is going out there and talking about how she wants him to be president. I mean, this is the state of the country we're in. Do you really think Ann Coulter feels that way? Who cares? It's not that she feels that way. It's the fact that what she's saying is directed at a specific group of people because they want a race war. They want people to feel attacked by protesters and then they want people to go after them. They want to start a race war. They want you to fight amongst each other because if you fight amongst each other, you're not going to go after them. And that is the problem here. That is, that is a really huge problem. We, a race war isn't going to help any of us. It's not. And as much as I want to hold all these people accountable, including Kyle, I'm not for uh, the, the death penalty on anybody. What he did, he needs, to, he needs to completely be held accountable. But at the same time, we have a huge prison industrial complex and the whole thing is wrong. We need to fix all of it. And he should be tried and he should go and have his trial. But people over here trying to make martyrs and trying to make excuses that the, the people he shot were white, that white on white, uh, black on black crime and all of this. Statistically, there are just as many black people in jail as there are white people. But proportionally, that makes a big difference because the percentage of the population is a lot less black. And the fact that proportionally, that means you have more black people uh, in jail. And these are facts. You shouldn't get defensive and you shouldn't get upset when we're talking about these things. Not. He's a, he's a kid that committed murder. Fell that out. And if he would have been black, he wouldn't have been prancing around waving his gun at everybody, including the police. The police didn't even, like, look at him. He literally was driven home, went to sleep until he got arrested. We still haven't arrested Breonna Taylor's killers. And y'all are worried about freaking Rand Paul being like booed by a bunch of protesters you're really gonna have a hissy fit because Rand Paul was booed by a bunch of protesters really really like you're a politician people are at a breaking point they're going to boo every single person Rand Paul introduced the Breonna Taylor uh, uh, act yeah you know what that was that was a uh, no knock warrants meaning that the police just can't barge in and and, and not knock and kill you, which is what they did to Breonna Taylor. But it didn't address her killers. It didn't arrest her killers. It didn't do anything regarding defunding the police. So spare me the, the, the Ayn Rand kind of ideology of liberty and freedom if you're not for liberty and freedom for everybody. You want people to fight with you against the establishment. You want them to fight against the military industrial complex, against the CIA, against all of these things. They're not going to join you when you think less of them, when you're not sitting there on the front lines, also fighting for them to have equal rights, because that means that you think less of them because it's not an issue you have to worry about. And if we don't understand that and come together, we are going to be in a very precarious situation and none of us are going to be absolved of it. Because on top of, of what just happened in Wisconsin, we have a pandemic, economic collapse, we have environmental collapse, 
We have um, the homelessness crisis that's out of control in most states, especially in California, in Los Angeles. We have a housing crisis and we have two corrupt, equally inept Republican parties. I consider the Democrats Republicans because that's what they are. And it is it is insane to me that we are stuck with this. But when I look it over, I have seen that this country hasn't dealt with racial issues. It, it wasn't that long ago that there were separate fountains for black and, and brown people. It wasn't that long ago that the Washington March happened. It wasn't that long ago that gay women and men couldn't be married to each other. It, I mean, we this is a young country. We can't expect it to all just happen overnight. But what I am saying is the fight over class and race should be irrelevant. It's, it's not one or the other, it's both. Both are needed. Both are tools that the oligarchy uses to literally pit us against each other. The competition for resources, who are you gonna look at when you're competing for resources? You're gonna look at the person they told you is less than you. That's, that's, that's what it is. They've used racism in this to split people apart. And we should understand that. We have to educate people. Not everybody's going to know that Joe Biden wrote the 1994 crime bill. I bet you a lot of people out there protesting don't know that because half of them weren't even alive by then. They, they, were just, they weren't even born yet. So instead of getting mad at people for not knowing all these things and for supporting people like Biden, let's educate them and teach them how, why Biden is such a terrible person, why Kamala Harris is such a terrible person, why what is happening has long been overdue. We need to talk to people, but nobody's gonna listen to you if you come at it from a condescending way, telling them that it doesn't matter, ignore, ignore what's going on, the police are just doing their jobs. They're not gonna listen to you. Why the hell would they listen to you? Why would they do that? because you're not being empathetic. You're not understanding where they're coming from. And so for me, I, I see that that's a huge issue on the populist left um, because they, a lot of people just wanna ignore race. And it, hap it happens to be a lot of white people that don't have experience in dealing with that sort of thing. And that's okay. Nobody's saying that you haven't suffered. Nobody's saying that you are rich, that as a white person, that you've never had any um, issues, that you, you've, had it, you've had it great. Nobody is saying that. Uh, like the problem is that as many economic issues as you might have had, when somebody is looking up a resume that has John Smith and then Laquisha uh, McLean, they're not gonna pick Laquisha McLean based on the name. That's literally proven by countless and countless of studies. You cannot tell me that that's not the case. So the issue isn't just police. Police are the minimal, they're the pawns, they're an arm of everything else that comes from our military, but it is something that we need to address. Police are shooting people. Police shoot all people, all kinds of people, but nobody's telling police, no governor's telling police, hey, can you check, can you check how rich uh, this, this kid is before I shoot him or not? No, they're gonna, they tend to shoot people and kill people of color more than others. And that's something you as a white person have to be comfortable enough to say it and, and say, you know what? I understand that you have it worse than me when it comes to racial issues with police. I'm gonna be there with you, but we also need to tackle economic issues because all of us are fighting. That is what Malcolm X and Fred Hampton were trying to build. And that's why they killed them. So you know what? Like, if, if we don't understand this, I, I don't know where we're going to go. But we have to really do it, like, fast. Because every day in this country, there are protests. And they're not going to stop. And, and, and the Trump supporters and the white nationalists, they're not going to stop either. They're not going to go away. People tell me, people in their neoliberal bubble who live in California, who have no idea what's going on in the middle of the country, who have never lived there, who have never gone there, or who have no idea what it's like in Central Florida are telling me Joe Biden's gonna win Florida. He's not gonna win Florida. Joe Biden's not gonna win. If, if I literally just got back from there, Donald Trump has such a presence there. There is such um, a support for him there. And you know what, whose fault that is? That's the Democrats' fault. 
that's the, the establishment's fault. That's politicians because they haven't dealt with this. They haven't addressed the people's concerns. Joe Biden is denying health care for all, is denying free college education, loan forgiveness, is denying a Green New Deal while running against Donald Trump. These people don't want to win. They don't. I am convinced they don't want to win. They just want to, they want this all to be on Trump and whatever. So it doesn't matter. Voting every four years is the bare minimum that one can do. And once you start realizing that there's so much you can do on the streets, that what was accomplished from the civil rights movement was done through a laser focused organizing and massive movements, then you realize there's so much more that we should be doing. People, we need to get out there. We need to start marching in the streets, not just against police brutality, but also against um, the inadequacy of these politicians. They're on vacation. When's the last time you took a month long vacation and decided that you weren't gonna work because you just couldn't find a solution? Like these are public servants and they're throwing, they're giving you the finger. They're saying, we don't care because you're gonna vote for us anyway. Let's stop, stop supporting either politician. Let's start educating each other and all of our people on who really the culprits are because this isn't gonna go away. What fuels racism is what the politicians are doing. And what's going to stop it is if we all go out there and, and stand together against every oppressive system, racism, economic inequality, against all of that, demanding simple things that we deserve, especially during a pandemic. You should be able to go to a doctor right now. No questions asked because of coronavirus. But you should have been able to do that a long time ago. We are the last major country that can't do that, that doesn't have their people covered. That is a problem. That isn't a, a, a pie in the sky. That isn't ponies. That isn't me asking for anything. That is a huge problem in America. And the inadequacy of these things, people not having jobs, being angry, being frustrated, is what's causing the civil unrest. This wouldn't happen if people were happy at home, getting their $2,000 a month, and didn't feel a need to really hold people accountable. The police are a symbol of the government. Don't you see that? They are the stormtroopers to the empire, but they can think for themselves. They can say, you know what? I'm not going to be a stormtrooper anymore. I'm going to stop participating in, in this. But, and that's what people hope to do when they're going after the police. People burning things may not be the best tactic unless it's like a police precinct. This is people. Riots are the language of the unheard. Martin Luther King Jr. said that. And he gave a long speech because he was a pacifist. See, I'm not a pacifist like he is. I believe that when people are pushed to a brink, to a breaking point, they are going to react. And so, like JFK said, if you make peaceful revolution impossible, you make violent revolution inevitable. And I don't want to go there. I don't want us to get there. But we're headed there. We're headed there because people aren't understanding this. We're too busy fighting each other. You need to look up. Immigrants aren't taking your jobs. Corporations are taking your jobs overseas. People like uh, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, they don't, they didn't get that. That's why we have Trump. I mean, this is, this is all a cycle and it's coming back to haunt us. And so when people make excuses regarding blatant racial in, in inaccuracies, racial inequality, that really perpetuates the fight and it gets people angry and it gets people to not focus on the bigger picture. So if you want people to focus on the bigger picture, you have to understand where they're coming from. You cannot dismiss the white supremacy and the horrible issues that are in this country if you want to go after everything else. And people will join you when, when that happens because that's what was happening during the civil rights movement and thereafter with people like Fred Hampton when the police came in and shot him dead. So you know what, like that's, that's the truth. That's the truth, do the research. Stop watching mainstream media, stop watching Fox News, stop watching CNN. They're both fake news. Stop arguing that one is real and they're both fake. They're both funded by the same machine. We don't have to argue with each other over that. We just have to come together. So I just wanted to say that. And um, yeah, 
just be careful out there. We're going to be covering more protests and more uh, things to come. So stay tuned. Bye, guys. Thank you.